The second round of the Kumo Tyre New South Wales Sports Dance Championship is proudly brought to you by AGM Engineering, CSJ Engineering and these valued partners. Brad Shields, pole position once again at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. How was the car in quali? Uh, yeah, thanks. It was um, really good as always. Um, on par with our best ever lap time around here, 29.2, so really happy. So the front of the car is looking a bit different this weekend than it has in the past. Anything you can say about that? Um, yeah, we've got some um, sticking headlights and a bit of a fake grill there, so made it go heaps faster. So after a few complaints, so it's all good now. Any adjustments to the car that you've got in mind? No, not really. I'm pretty, pretty happy with the car after qualifying. So yeah, just check it over and just try and stay in first is the plan. Well, anyone you want to thank? Thank you. Um, yeah, as always, Joe, Tony, Mal, Vic, all the guys that come out and work on the car, I just drive it. So, yeah, huge thanks to them. So another pole position for Brad Shields, picking up where he left off from round one of the Kumo Tire New South Wales Sports Dance Championship at Winton Motor Raceway. We now move to Sydney Motorsport Park in Western Sydney, taking a look at a few of the action zones for the circuit. Turns one and two, you've got to watch out for. There's opportunities to pass and be able to actually make contact as well. You've got to look out through the back section of the circuit and then into turn eight, another good opportunity to make a pass and get a run onto that all important back straight before you hit those final couple of corners and make the run down into the main straight and back to turn one. City Motorsport Park, we come here a lot with the Kumo Tire New South Wales Sports Dance Championship, so the guys should know the settings they need to have. We'll see what action is ahead in round two. Opening race for the second round of the Kumo Tire New South Wales Sports Dance Championship, proudly brought to you by AGM Engineering and CSJ Engineering for the crowd at Sydney Motorsport Park. And Gary, it's a strong field of sports dance that have come out to play. It certainly is, compared to the first round, which was down at Whitton Motor Raceway. I guess the travel, the heat at that time of the year was always going to be a telling factor. But here we are, back on home turf, and what a good roller. It's been a brilliant roll up, including this man, Willem Furcher. He was at round one. Round two qualifying did not quite go his way. He made contact with the ball down through this section of the track, turns four and five, and has a lot of work to do now to come back through the field to try to get some of those championship points that he needs from men like these ones up the front, and Nolan putting pressure all over the back of that mark, uh, mark car. But already we can see that Brad Shields in Joe Sets be it. That's a twin radio turbo charge beast and while well, that's going on we see one of the back markers have a little bit of a whoopsie down at turn eight uh, but i was going to allude to the chef camaros both chef camaros here for this weekend steve lacy didn't have a great meeting down at winton had um, uh, brake failure in one race and contact with virtue in another so he'd be looking to get some points back for this one for sure he definitely is as Furcher continues to make his way through. There's Mannix in the RX-7 as well. We've seen that car a couple of times with the Kumo Tire New South Wales sports fans having a good run, trying to come back through the field and follow Furcher through. He's making short work of it at the moment. Passes TA2 competitor Josh Haynes, who's making a, uh, a start in the category for the first time in that nice Chev powered missing. Yeah, that's the car of Tony Barton. And, uh, we've seen Dan Smith run that car now. Got a call up, a late call up, I believe, that have a run in it. Similar sort of uh, type of vehicle that he races normally in TA2. He's definitely enjoying that one, isn't he? As we saw Steve Lacey getting past Bill Chetton in the Pro IT and Billy's Motorsport Chef Canara. Of course, these two cars, very similar match. We've seen them battle it out on the circuits around New South Wales for years now. And it looks like Chetton's starting to fall into the clutches of the Ingrams behind. Both of these cars, new to the category, in some ways making returns after pretty extensive rebuilds and it looks like Matthew Ingram to the inside of Peter at the moment in the turn one it gets pretty tight down there and uh, they luckily keep it away from each other yeah what uh, two interesting motor vehicles had a chance to have a bit of a look at them on Saturday morning before qualifying and uh, that uh, the RX-7 the one that's in front at the moment what a piece of work that is they've done a lot to that car both cars are very quick very quick in a straight line be ones to watch as they start getting themselves around it. Of course, they've got the team at Pack Performance behind those cars as well. So, well-known rotary engine builders from all types of motorsport, and they'll be able to get the straight line speed out of these cars and hook it up with the cornering and aero that they've already got. We 
should see these things develop into weapons over the course of the season. Of course, at the moment, all over the back of Bill Chetton, who is a former state and national champion. So that's not a bad piece of kit that's in front of them. They're staying right with him here. Yeah, they certainly are. And uh, that would be oh. somewhat, oh, <laughs> in saying that they're not staying with him, they're going past him. So that, uh, we, we've seen a bit of what these cars' potential is like, given that uh, Nick Smith's car is a RJ20 turbocharged car, but Mazda, the sleek design of the cars, I guess is helping them a fair bit as well as the power they're outputting, and obviously these cars are rotaries uh, as opposed to what Nick runs generally. Oh, at the moment it looks like Matthew Ingram, there he is there, but oh. Peter Ingram has gone around between four and five, just lost the rear of the car, but luckily for him he didn't make the wall, we've seen a lot of cars make the wall out there, it might be just one of those things of, of course, there's been a bit of resurfacing at Sydney Motorsport Park happening in the off season, and you get the change of how the rubber builds up, and you just get a little bit different grip, as it looks like Bill Chetton has slowed through the hairpin, I think there might be a drama with this car, Gary. Yeah, it looks like it might be, you know, saying... We're midway through a race when you get a car, get a, have a lose like that where you lose the tail end, but it's a bit of a surprise. Um, it might have something to do with the power rather than the grip, <laughs> if you know true. what I mean. Yeah, definitely. As now, to the inside, Pro takes pillars in this battle further down the field. Of course, you've got Division 1, Division 2 and Division 3 cars all the way through here. Somebody to race for everybody, but actually it looks like pillars might not be race much longer. It sounds like there might be some sort of engine drama with that car. He's pulled to the inside. A lot of smoke coming out from under the bonnet. Yeah, here's uh, Smith putting a move. Oh, sorry, Hayes putting a move. Oh, oh. Hayes, didn't it? <laughs> uh, Josh Hayes trying to put a move on Camburus, and I don't think uh, Theo seen him. And no. while that's going on, Rod Moynihan's come down the inside and snuck up a position. Hasn't Rod been doing well in that Monaro as well in the last couple of rounds since he's really brought it online of course Willem Furcher the car that he brought that off and Willem still doing a lot of engine work and things for that car so it still has plenty of power under the bottom he's finding up a couple of positions yeah and then we go back towards front and third and uh, Picos in the Mark 2 V8 and followed by Dan Nolan in his Toyota turbocharged powered uh, Mazda Right behind. Yeah, so there's a good battle of those three and just in front of course is Jason Crompton in an interesting motor vehicle to say the least. This car was originally uh, his wife's shopping vehicle and he decided he wanted to go and race it and then he dropped the Chevy in it and then it started to turn into a space frame car and a pretty quick one at that. He's right up there, isn't he? Oh, Mentikos nearly makes contact with the rear of him there down into the hairpin. So lucky to avoid that one. Different braking capacities of all the cars. Now Crompton with a big slide into oh. the final complex. How did he hold on to that? That wow. was huge. <laughs> but he's got yeah, to there is a... Well, obviously Ingram wasn't the only one with grip limited because Crompton's had the same drama. Different corner though. And now he's going to go to the inside and take that position back from Nolan. So Crompton with a little bit of work to do after losing the rear of that BMW through the final complex. Mantikos staying in front and just look what's coming up behind them. It's Willem Thurcher who's made up a heap of ground so far through this race. He's going to run out of time though because this man out in front, Brad Shields, just never headed from the start. He's, uh, he's put in a well of a performance here and it follows on from his uh, great qualifying effort as well. This car will be on pace when he races against the National Sports Championship contenders. Just taking a look at the result for the opening race for the Fumo Tire New South Wales Sports Fans Championship. Brad Shields leads home Steve Lacey, Matthew Ingram, Nick Mantikos, Daniel Nolan rounding out your top five. Down in the pits, we caught up with newcomer to the category, Josh Haynes, to have a chat about coming across from TA2 and racing the sports event. Josh Haynes, uh, first time in New South Wales sports events coming off TA2. How's it feel like in this car compared to what you're used to? Uh, yeah, it's certainly a different ball game. Obviously, I'm sitting on the other side of the car. Um, so, luckily, Tony's given me the opportunity uh, and the whole team. Uh, it's really special to be here this weekend having a crack in sports events. Um, I got here for the last practice yesterday and managed to get three laps in, and uh, yeah, it was certainly a different thing. So, went out in qualifying there. I'm not sure exactly where we're seeing. I think we're in the top three of our class. Um, and obviously, yeah, there's, there's a lot we can gain. Uh, I'll change a couple of things. I'll improve myself. Um, and yeah, it's looking forward to a good weekend. Obviously this morning it's a bit of a cold track, but there's certainly some rubber down still um, and the sun's out. So 
So the UV's warming up the track really quickly and rubber's, rubber's getting laid down pretty quick. Um, so yeah, it should, should be a good weekend as long as we keep it on the black stuff and stay out of trouble, it should be good. Driving a chassis car compared to the TR2s you're used to, how does that compare as far as how it's handling out there? Uh, yeah, it's certainly different. Obviously, with the TA2 being a space frame, left-hand drive, um, and they're on a balloon tyre, so the car's moving around a lot. Um, but I can actually... It's, hard, it's a lot harder to deliver the power down, obviously, because there's more power in this thing. So uh, as much as they're a similar car in a way, they're also very, very different. Um, and so I've got to learn to adapt to that. Um, but I'm loving every second of it. And I'd just love to thank Beaches Sea Do, my sponsors, uh, Chapman Floor Coverings, Herzog Steel, Car Bids, All Bids, uh, Elven Group, um, and yeah, all, all the other people that make this possible. It's really important. So. Race two of the weekend for the Kumo Tire New South Wales Sports Dance Championship, proudly brought to you by AGM Engineering and CSJ Engineering. And you can see Beryl Chet not getting back out there. Unfortunately, engine dramas for the Camaro with the end to his weekend. I believe it. Uh, they're saying it may have dropped a valve. Obviously, they don't have to go home and pull the heads off and have a look. But yeah, it doesn't sound good, does it? not the way you want it to go, especially at the second round of the championship. They'll be doing a few of the national rounds, of course. Sports stands back at Sydney Motorsport Park a couple of times, including with the national championship later on in September. So make sure to get trackside to be able to see some great cars. It's Willem Furcher now, he got to the back of Daniel Nolan during race one. He's right there with him at the start of race two, so plenty for them to battle it out as we go on board with the Nolan Motorsport car. Just look at the tight confines of that cabin. Even though it's quite open, up near his shoulders, you can see down below the knees, he doesn't have huge amounts of room. And we'll keep an eye out too for P Peter Ingram coming through the field after that little bit of a miscue in the first one. So he should be quite strong in the back half of this race as well. Unfortunately for him, of course, because that spin happened quite late, I think the car might have stalled as well with the heat that was involved in these cars. And he just wasn't able to get back on track as Crompton looks to the inside of Thurcher down into turn one. It's going to be very close. We've seen it in race one. In race two, these guys in division one doing it again. And there's Ingram looking to the inside of Crompton trying to buy into the battle. Mannix is just back a little bit further. Plenty to play for amongst these guys as they're all trying their absolute hardest. It's a little bit cloudy for race two, so we might be able to see a little bit faster times as well from these guys. Yeah, that thing of uh, Crompton seems to have uh, plenty of straight line uh, work because you might remember back to the beginning of the championship last year that the uh, the Toyota in, in shot there actually won the first round of the championship. Yeah, it did. Will Bircher picking up the victory there. I think it was actually... Um, that was uh, Jack, Scott Cameron, Cameron was actually yeah, driving it. Yeah, the wheel, wasn't he? Yeah, so yeah. he picked up the win for this car, but Will Bircher is still searching for one as he continues to chase on to Nolan. This has allowed the Mark uh, Mustang and Pickman Ticklos to just pull away a little bit out in front. So he's got a nice little gap and he's able to just focus on the cars in front of him and his speed as now Bircher looks the inside. Just look at Ingram. He's going to try to take it three wide. No, he doesn't. He pulls out of the three wide into turn one. Probably a good choice. Yeah, that could have been a little bit scary, but he certainly has pace to burn in that RX-7. And, oh, big lock-up from Crompton. Is it in behind him? And I think there's been a touch there. I think he's given a little bit of a touch to the rear of Ingram, trying to get out of it. Let's take the onboard with Ingram. Yes, you can just see the rear of the car lift up. He has to put in a whole heap of opposite lock. Luckily for him, he's able to keep on going just a short uh, detour onto the grass. Really quite lucky when you think about it because those cars are fairly fragile in the back end of them uh, because they're weight saving and is that uh, Monaghan Park off the side of the road? No, there's Monaghan there, there's another car parked off the side of the road. Uh, uh, it might be Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Commodore. Commodore. Yeah, yeah, so unfortunate for him. The interesting car in this pack of course is the white RX-7 which um, is Smith, of course, he had those dramas at Winton at round one. The whole competitor base chipped in to try to keep that car on the road after a bit of an incident in qualifying. He ran without the win for the weekend, picked up the points, had a ball racing, and now in round two, finds himself in the middle of this great little battle pack. Just in front of him is another Mark car, and that's Lighthead in that one. Yeah, Andrew Lighthead, who the next weekend was heading up to Queensland Raceway for the first round of the Mark Cars Championship, where they I believe there was supposed to be a debut of the new Mark car. So we'll keep an eye out for that one. 
have to see what happens there as he's putting all sorts of pressure on the Minara in front. He has to keep an eye on the behind though because these two cars, the Supra and the RX-7 are snapping out their heels. Glenn Crow in the Supra, we've seen him have some incredible runs up through the field when he can get that car hooked up. Of course, like any sports stand, can be a little bit temperamental. Sometimes that means that you don't quite get the running out of it that you'd like, but he's putting all sorts of pressure on the back of Smith as Whitehead continues to work on Monaghan. Yeah, yeah, we've got uh, Chev V8, you've got uh, Coyote V8, and then you've got a, a, a turbocharged car at the back of that other V8. So there's all <laughs> yeah. sorts of different configurations there. Oh, and no. oh, Lifehead's uh, gone around at turn two, unfortunately. I think he just lost the rear all on his own there, probably just trying to put a bit too much brake into it right at the end of the stop, and it's just rotated around. Back at the front, it looks like Ingram is starting to fall into the clutches of Furcher. He's dragging Mantikos along with him, but just watch that man behind. Peter Ingram, we're on board with him here. See how fast he closes down on the Ugh. smart car. To have a go at the speed differential That's incredible. there. incredible. <laughs> incredible speed from that car. The Mark car well up over 200 kilometres an hour down in turn one at Sydney Mosmore Park. And the Ingram RX-7 has passed him like he's standing still. Just absolutely incredible. What's, that car's going to be one to watch for the rest of the season, surely. Well, uh, mate, people are thinking, you know, I think uh, the, the trend was set with uh, Brad Shields in Joe's head speed. Yeah. That, that uh, rotary powered cars, particularly when they're turbocharged, can be a, a pretty good item. And uh, they're rocket ships in a straight line. They um, definitely are. <laughs> and the more you rev them, the faster they go. That's it. And in a sports van, these guys tend to love to rev, don't they? Like, it's all about the power, as Nick mm. Mavis now sits on the back of Ingram, and there he goes, like a jet out of the hand, and takes off down the road. So you'd have to expect that Ingram's going to get past Virtue here. I'm not sure that he'll be able to get past um, his brother, but you never know what might happen as he gets onto the back of the RX-8. Let's have a look out the rear of Birch's car. Here's Ingram to the inside, down the main straight. Last pass that airless powered uh, Subaru and takes the position away. I'd love to, um, and, and maybe it's something we should check next time. They do have a radar on the, the Sydney Motorsport Park uh, front straight. What the yeah. difference in the speed? It might not be the actual terminal speed, but what the difference is at the radar point between, say, some of those front running cars. It would be very interesting to see, of course, the national cars, they're getting well up past into the 200s for the top speed of these guys as now Ingram to the inside, takes the position away from his teammate and brother. A little bit of a slide out of turn six, but he's been able to stay with it. Bircher obviously has the pace from about turn one all the way around to this section on the track because he's staying with them every lap as well. And now tries around the outside of Ingram, not going to make it work there. And Matthew Ingram keeps the position for now. Yeah, well, you know, people that follow sports and dance a bit might not be aware of who the Ingrams are. That we, they've come from improved production. And this has been uh, muted for quite a while that uh, eventually they uh, they were going to go into sports and dance. And finally, we've seen these cars out and about. And I'll tell you what, what great competitors to have in the category as well. Clean, fair racing, great looking cars. They're really involved with the category and the other competitors. It's a real good atmosphere amongst everybody at the moment. As we can see out in front, he's our winner yet again. Haven't seen much of him because he's just that far out in front this weekend. Brad Shields in Joe Sands, incredible Fiat 124 Coupe. AGM Engineering, CSJ Engineering round of the Kumo Tyre New South Wales Sports Stands Championship. You can see it's yet another victory to him. Steve Lacey second, Peter Ingram brings it home in third, fourth goes to Matthew Ingram and fifth to Will Uh So my name is Matt Ingram uh, from Ingram Brothers Racing and uh, it's a Mazda RX-8 um, this car. It's actually the car that won the Daytona 24 hour in America uh, in 2008. Um, and so it came over to Australia and then not and I bought it. Uh, raced it for a few years as a naturally aspirated uh, three-rotor. Um, it was a great car but just a little bit underpowered so I've um, engaged Pack Performance and, and Rocky um, from Billet by Pack to, to put in a Billet aluminium centre plate in the motor and turbocharge it. So it makes a bit more power now and uh, is able to keep up with some of the faster V8s. So um, hoping this weekend for its first, first weekend out race in about four years that we were able to be at the pointy end of the field. Yeah, we've done a handful of test days in the car to get, get the head around it, but there's no substitute for a race weekend and pulling out on dummy grid for a qualifying session, which we just did, 
and um, qualified in fifth position, which I'm super happy with for the first first time qualifying um, in four years, and with some very fast cars. So um, I'm hoping that I'll just make small improvements and I'll be able to stay in that top five and maybe even make up a position or two over the weekend. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to thank Rocky and the Pack Performance crew. They built the engine, they tuned the car, they tuned the the ignition cut. Rocky's, Rocky's here this weekend and his wife uh, and they've just been a dream to work with so we're really happy to have them on board uh, helping us, me and my brother, um, race some really cool fast cars so thanks to the Pack Performance team. Third and final race for round two of the New South Wales Sports Sedan Championship and once again it's Brad Shirls who goes straight to the lead with Steve Lacey trying his best to stick with the rotary powered Fiat. I feel like Steve Lacey in the letter of card knows that his only opportunity is to try to get in front of Brad on the cold tyre run. But once Brad gets away down in turn two, you can just see the opening of the gap that he's got out in front. It's in the back of the shot as we go on board with Nolan, who makes door-to-door -door contact with Mantikos. These guys are fighting hard for position in these early stages. They know what it means to get there because it can be hard to pass later in the race. Yeah, yeah especially when tyre wear starts to come into it as well. And uh, there's Josh Haynes uh, giving Mantegos a little bit of a hurry up as well. So it's that uh, little bit of a move there has allowed uh, uh, Mantegos to, well, not allowed, it's actually caused him to drop back a bit from where he normally would be. On board with Peter Ringer, who's had a spin out of turn six. You can just see it lights the rears up that car as he comes on to, or maybe it's as it comes on to boost, and it just rotated the thing on him into the grass, and he's gone right back to the rear of the field, because on the opening lap, everybody able to get past him there. It's Leo Kapouris looks to the inside of Crompton. He's not going to be able to make that move stick, because Crompton drives away down the back straight. But Ingram with a lot of work to do in this final race for the AGM Engineering CSJ Engineering supported round of the Kumo Tires New South Wales Sports Stands Championship, of course. I've got to say a huge thank you to all of the supporter group for the Kumo Tire New South Wales Sports Dance Championship. They make sure that all these rounds can happen. There's some great incentives for competitors as well and a really great close-lit community which you can get involved with if you've got a car or maybe buy one and get out here. The fields are growing, plenty of races up and down the East Coast and some exciting announcements to come for what's happening in the National Championship which will be supported by the New South Wales Championship as well here at Sydney Motorsport Park later in the year. Great battle between Haynes and Camburus, though. Camburus all over the back of him in that space frame field. Uh, hasn't he uh, come on a bit this year as well? Normally he would be uh, right at the back, but as you can see, there's a fair, fair few behind him now. And speaking of New South Wales Port Sedans, I believe that there's a few of them going down to Winton again in on the June long weekend because the National Sports Sedan Championship kicks off there with Speed Series on that weekend. So. That should be worth keeping an eye out. It's worth keeping an eye on this battle as well. Kamburis has got past Haynes at turn two, and now down through turns four and five. Haynes trying to work it around the outside, but he's not been able to make it stick. And he has to drop in behind Kamburis, who'll no doubt pick up extra motivation from making such a great move like that as Ingram gets to the inside of Smith as well. Two very different RX-7s behind there. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, right up behind Haynes later on in the lap. Yeah, maybe uh, if Smith wants to stick with that one, he might have to take that wing off so he can, won't have any uh, downforce going down the straight. <laughs> It'll be a bit, a bit quicker in a straight line, but certainly uh, this particular car has got some straight line uh, handling, as they like to say. I'm not sure he'll be able to get all the way to the front just because of the nature of how far back he fell, but look at him close down here. This sports stand with Fia Camaros, of course, was one of the cars that, you know, a few years ago, with the ever advancing nature of sports vans and technology, it shows you where a front running car in the field is today, even though it's well maintained and looked after and a lot of work done to it, it just shows how much extra you have to do with technological advancement to stay up the point here. Yeah, yeah, well, I think we could label that uh, RX-7 a stealth bomber yeah, because it's, it's, uh, it's got the right color. It comes up very quickly on you and it disappears just as fast. It's an absolute beautiful machine. Oh, oh. oh no, Steve Lacey, the number one on the door, but unfortunately for him, he's parked out the exit of turn five. What's happened with him? We go on board here and just here, the car's struggling to 
get the motor operational. I think he's probably sounds like it's just not getting something air fuel, fuel starve or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something's going on and he's not able to continue in the race. He pulls over to the outside of turn five. And that unfortunately brought out a safety car. Unfortunate for probably a few of the drivers, but great news for Peter Ingram, who was able to close all those gaps. You can just see him there behind Mantikos and Crompton. And now he has the opportunity to actually get on the podium, which would also make it, Gary, a rotary complete podium in New South Wales. <laughs> there. So uh -huh. something there for people, isn't the, it? The traditional push rod V8 people won't be happy <laughs> about that, will they? No, I'm not sure when the last time was that we well, had a full rotary. I think podium. someone got shoved a bit so, wide out of turn two then. Yeah, they're... Smith is on the grass on the outside there, I think. So I'd yeah. like to see if we have a replay of that one coming up. But Crompton now under pressure from Ingram as they go over the hill. Let's see if Ingram looks to the inside. He might just stay there for a moment. It was Smith. Ah. And he's now making the U-turn to get back on track. Unfortunately for him, that's going to mean that he'll lose out on a few of those points in the battle for Division 3. Oh, yes. I had to the inside of him. Yeah. Yeah, there was contact. Birch is slowing as well, Gary. So something up with the Subaru there right at the end of the day. Unfortunately for Fetcher, there's only a lap left to go and he's going to go now into the pit lane. Crompton to the oh. inside and takes both into turn one. Huge move. Oh. Well, Nolan's trying to hang around the outside. He's right there, but not quite close enough. And one RX-7 has to give way to another through this huge sweeper at the start of the lap. Well, certainly... Uh... Nolan went a lot later in brakes because he, right at the end of that in-car shot we got from Ingram, you can see the nose of the Mazda coming back down the outside of him. Sorry, the uh, yeah, in the in the Mazda come right down the outside yeah. of him. So he obviously went a lot later into brakes and tried to hold it on the outside, but it just didn't work, did it? He wasn't able to stay there. He did everything he could. He wanted that podium. Plus, it would have been a great one for Nolan as well because first time for a sports fans podium for him. But out in front, Brad Shields picking up another victory. He's led it from lights to the flag in every race here at Sydney Motorsport Park for the AGM Engineering, CSJ Engineering, Kumo Tyres, New South Wales Sports Fan Championship round. Taking a look at the results, Brad Shields, Matthew Ingram, Peter Ingram, Daniel Nolan and Jason Compton rounding out your five. We caught up with Brad Shields down in the pits to get his thoughts on a great weekend of racing. Yeah, really good weekend for us. Um, pole position and uh, first place in all races. So, yeah, couldn't get better. So we're really happy. The car was reliable. Um, yeah, perfect weekend. No, no, yeah, the, the car was fast. Like, we uh, went on par with our best ever lap time around here. Um, and I don't think the track was as fast as it usually is. So hopefully next time we can crack into the 28s is our goal for next time, hopefully. So, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a good weekend. and. Yeah, the car ran really well. Yeah, so for Winton, we'll uh, just go over the car as usual. Well, Joe will. <laughs> um, and, yeah, we'll turn up there. We had a good weekend there last last time for the first round. So it'll be good to join the Nationals for that weekend. And, um, yeah, hopefully we get some good results there too. Thank you. Um, yeah, as usual, Joe, Tony, Vic, Mal, um, all, all the guys, they put in a huge effort to keep the car going. So, um, yeah, it ran faultlessly this weekend so it was really good that's all the action from round two of the kumo tire new south wales sports dance championship proudly brought to you by csj and agm engineering i hope you've enjoyed all the action here on blendline tv make sure to check out the website for more information about the season ahead there's plenty more to come until next time bye for now